What's up, everybody? It's JT Sports Max, you guys, with another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about my top 10 offenses for the 2019 NFL season. So how I did this list, I researched. Um, I'm basically projecting what 10 teams I feel are going to be the best offenses in the NFL next season or this coming season. And really, nobody should really be upset about the 10 teams that I have on this list. Maybe you guys can be upset about why I ranked each team, but I mean... Realistically, every team that I have on this list should most likely be a top 10 offense going into the season when we look at the roster and when we compare their stats from last season. So the teams that I have in here, basically, I'm not saying they're going to make it to the playoffs or whatnot. This is just top 10 offenses going into the 2019 NFL season. And, you know, at this point, you know, we don't really have any film or tape of what these offenses are going to look like this season. So basically, we're going to buy last year's stats and how the roster is looking like this year, you know, how many players they have returning, key losses and whatnot are all a factor into these rankings and all the teams on here. And nobody really should have any conflicts. Now, it's a handful of teams I wanted to put on here, but I couldn't put in here for reasons. But, I mean, I think this is a pretty good list for the most part. So, for the first team I have on this list at number 10, I have the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yes, the Pittsburgh Steelers lost Antonio Brown, the best wide receiver in football. And yes, Ben Roethlisberger is showing signs of regression. But the Steelers do have one of the best offensive lines in the NFL. According to Pro Football Focus, they had number one offensive line in the league last year. They also have wide receiver Juju Smith-Schuster and half at James Conner in the fold as they both made it to the Pro Bowl last season. They also have guys like James Washington and Deontay Thompson who should be able to have an impact on the wide receiving core this season. Last year, the Pittsburgh Steelers were able to score points in bunches. And when they got going, they were really, really hard to stop. When they get going this year... They should even be a top 10 offense, even without Antonio Brown. And I I don't see why anybody's going to say, what about Le'Veon? Because we already proved that we can have success at the running back position without Le'Veon Bell. That's far gone. The Pittsburgh Steelers are going to be a top 10 offense this season. At number nine, I have the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, the Philadelphia Eagles have a top five offensive line. And with the offseason addition of Deshaun Jackson, who is still one of the better deep threats in the league, along with acquiring half at Jordan Howard, who they acquired in a trade with the Chicago Bears, and Carson Wentz returning from injury, and also the pickup of halfback Miles Sanders, who they drafted in this year's past NFL draft, the running game should be leaps ahead of what it was last year. The only question about the Philadelphia Eagles offense that I have, which is why I ranked them at number nine, is... Will Carson Wentz be able to stay healthy? That has pretty much been the Achilles heels because if Carson Wentz gets injured, they don't have a Nick Foles to come back and still maintain or save the season. So if Carson Wentz gets injured, the Philadelphia Eagles are most likely done. And that's my biggest concern is his ability to stay healthy. But pretty much this Eagles team is solid. The wide receiving core, Alshon Jeffrey, Deshaun Jackson is back now. This is a very, very good offense. The off the line is very good. So I had the Philadelphia Eagles here at number nine. At number eight, I have the Atlanta Falcons. Now, the Atlanta Falcons have Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, and Muhammad Sanu. You won't find any better receiving cores in the NFL, along with tight end Austin Hooper. They also had Devontae Freeman, who was consistent running back, and they also have season veteran Matty Ice, who will be underneath center with a major improvement at the offensive line as the Atlanta Falcons drafted in this past year's NFL draft. Offensive guard Chris Lindstrom and Caleb McGarry, who both of those guys should start right away. They also hired former Tampa Bay Buccaneers head coach Derek Cutter as the offensive coordinator who likes to take a lot of deep shots with his vertical offense. The Falcons should have one of the most elite offenses in the NFL this year, and I had them at number eight on this list. Moving on to number seven, I have the Indianapolis Colts. Now, the Indianapolis Colts offensive line, led by offensive guard Quentin Nelson, was majorly improved last season. I mean, Andrew Luck actually was able to drop back and have solid, solid pass protection. 
And Marlon Mack, when he was healthy, he was very good for the Indianapolis Colts. He had 901 rushing yards to go along with nine touchdowns on the ground. And I'm expecting him, when he's healthy and if he's healthy, to be the lead back for the Indianapolis Colts this year and have a good season. And also, they had tight end Eric Ebron, who surprised everyone in the NFL last year. He will also be a big piece of the Indianapolis Colts receiving core, along with Devin White, Devin Funches, excuse me, and Paris Campbell. And we can't forget T.Y. Hilton. So the biggest thing is Paris Campbell. Now, rookie wide receivers, they normally take a while to get into the fold. Paris Campbell is more of a slot guy, so it's going to take him a while to get acclimated with the Indianapolis Colts offense. But after a few weeks, I'd say about week nine, that's when things should start get, getting rolling for Paris Campbell. And this Indianapolis Colts offense is going to be very, very good with the new offseason addition that they acquired and free agency, and these weren't any high-profile moves. Devin Funches wasn't a move that I didn't even know about Devin Funches going to the Indianapolis Colts until I was researching for this video. So the Indianapolis Colts, they did work in free agency, quiet signings, but impactful. So at number six, I have the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, considering the year the Chiefs had last season led by quarterback Patrick Mahomes, this is a really low ranking, but we don't know if Tyreek Hill is even going to play this season, meaning guys like Miko Hartman and Demarcus Robinson had to step up right away and perform right away as well. I mean, the running back position is a question well, even though I'm pretty sure that Damian Williams will be the starter. My question about him is, will he be able to perform? It was last season a fluke. I don't really... No, but I think he should be able to do pretty well. The Chiefs do have a solid off the line, along with tight end Travis Kelsey, who is probably now the best tight end in all of football now that Rob Gronkowski is now retired. And they do have the 2018 NFL MVP and Patrick Mahomes at quarterback and Andy Reid calling the plays. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Kansas City Chiefs play better than the ranking I have them at on this list. But for now, I'll leave them here at number six because I just have a bunch of questions and I don't really feel comfortable putting them in my top five until I see that those questions are fully answered when it comes to that wide receiver position and who's going to replace Tyreek Hill if Tyreek Hill doesn't play this year. At number five, we have the New England Patriots. Now, the New England Patriots lost Rock and Towski and Offensive tackle Trent Brown. Rogantowski retired. Trent Brown left to the Oakland Raiders for a four-year, $66 million deal in free agency. But they drafted their offensive tackle, Yannick Juice, who was my favorite offensive lineman from this past draft. And they still have Isaiah Wynn, who they took in the first round of the 2018 NFL draft, who didn't play this past season. The New England Patriots off of the line is top five in the NFL, undoubtedly. On top of drafting wide receiver Nikhil Harry out of Arizona, they also have Demarius Thomas. They had Julian Edelman and Josh Gordon is expected to play this year, at least from what I've read. He is, he should be able to play this year. And if he comes back, the New England Patriots are going to have a very good wide receiving core. And they probably have the deepest backfield in all of the NFL. They have halfback Damian Harris, who they drafted this past year. Sonny Michelle, who was very solid. Rex Burkhead and James White. Plus, we can't forget, they have old grandpa Tom Brady back under the helm, underneath center, and offensive coordinator Josh McDaniel. So the New England Patriots offense should be very good. I think they're going to be a lot more leaning on the run game since they have a bunch of good, talented, capable running backs. And this offense, without a doubt, is going to be one of the best in the NFL this year. Coming in at number four, we have the New Orleans Saints. Now, despite a few losses, like losing talented center, Max Ugger to retirement, and reliable running back, Mark Ingram to the Baltimore Ravens in free agency. The Saints still have near the same offensive personnel from last season. Despite those two losses that I talked about earlier, they added Jared Cook in free agency and also a halfback Latavius Murray. Now, Drew Brees is one of the most prolific passers in the game right now. On top of that, he has wide receiver Michael Thomas, who is on his way to entering that top five wide receiver discussion, and halfback Alvin Kamara with his unique skill set. The New Orleans Saints should pick up where they left off last season now coming in at number three this is most likely going to 
caused much debate and discussion in the comment section. The comment section is probably going to be going live once they see this. But yes, I have the Cleveland Browns at number three on this list. And how could you not have them on this high on their list? I mean, they have arguably the most star-powered offense in the league with the best wide receiver duo in the league, Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham. You don't get a better one-two punch at wide receiver than that. Then, plus, they have a current backfield with halfback Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, who will be playing once he gets done serving his nine-game suspension, and Duke Johnson, who is still on the roster and hasn't been traded as of right now. And this video has been recorded and uploaded. And they also have quarterback Baker Mayfield, who had a phenomenal rookie campaign and should have an even better second year with the additional Odell Beckham. Plus, he's going to have Jarvis Landry. Then you're throwing Antonio Callaway in there, who I think is going to be very good this year, who should start at slot wide receiver, who's going to benefit from Odell Beckham and Jarvis Landry getting the most of the attention on the defense side of the ball. Yes, I'm not a Cleveland Browns fan, but I am all aboard the Cleveland Browns hype train. At number two, I have the Los Angeles Chargers. Now, the Los Angeles Chargers, Keenan Allen is on his way to cement himself as a top five wide receiver. They lost Tyrell Williams to the Oakland Raiders in free agency, but they do have Mike Williams, who should be able to have pick up that production that Tyrell Williams had. And Mike Williams had a very good season last season. They also have Melvin Gordon, who looks to be one of the better running backs in the NFL. And Phillip Rivers, the future Hall of Famer, gets one of his favorite targets back in tight end Hunter Henner, who has just recovered from his injury that sidelined him all 2018. He played in the divisional round game against New England Patriots. He took 14 snaps that game. And they also get offensive guard Forrest Lamp, who was drafted in the 2017 NFL draft. He's fully healthy, and he looks to play his first full NFL season. He should already add to what is already an oppressive offensive line for the LA Chargers. And at number one, I have the Los Angeles Rams, basically the same team on the offensive side of the ball from last season. They got quarterback Jared Goff coming back, who was getting his go-to guy, Cooper Cup, back from injury. Plus, they have an improved offensive line, making a few signings there and improvements at that spot. They also drafted halfback out of Memphis, explosive halfback Daryl Henderson in the draft. And if Todd Gurley's knees hold up, this is going to be an explosive one-two combo. I mean, Devil Henderson, this guy was phenomenal during his time at Memphis. Todd Gurley was an NFL MVP candidate. And if he's able to stay healthy, this offense is going to be even better than what it was last year. And that's a scary thing because this offense was very, very good. And if they make it to the Super Bowl next year, they most, without a doubt, would not be putting up three points. So that's it for this video. Top 10 offenses going into the 2019 NFL season. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. What teams do you feel should have been on this list? Make sure to like the video and subscribe. And thanks for watching.